we now come to the conclusion and the end of our uh, trajectory generation chapter, chapter 7. And I'd like to show you some MATLAB commands that we're going to be using uh, for this course uh, that we can see and uh, look at some simulation with these commands. Uh, the first command is the joint trajectory command. Uh, this is called jtraj, that's the function jtraj, and it's part of the MATLAB robotics toolbox. And the input to this function is q initial and q desired and the number of steps or number of uh, via points. So remember, the joint trajectory here creates a trajectory for each one of the joints that we have. So q initial would be the initial joint angle at the trajectory, and q desired is, is the final joint angle uh, for trajectory of that joint. Uh, so we can do this for all the joints in our robot. Okay. Uh, the second command is the Cartesian trajectory. In this case, uh, we don't deal with joints. We, do, we deal with uh, the Cartesian coordinates. Uh, and this command is C traj. The input to this command is T initial and T desired and the number of steps or via points. Okay, so TI basically is the transformation matrix at the beginning of my trajectory. And T desired will be the transformation matrix at the end of my trajectory. Okay, and that would give me TT, which is a transformation, a trajectory of transformation matrices that I can see stacked on top of each other. All right, so QT gives me a stack of joint angles that are stacked on top of each other, and T trajectory gives me a stack of uh, Cartesian transformation matrices that are stacked at each other. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and show you here some. Uh, simulation and some uh, use of these two commands uh, and I'm going to be using MATLAB release 2020A uh, and along with this I'm using robotics toolbox uh, release um, 10.4 all right so let's start this and and see how this looks like now here I'm going to show you how to generate trajectories and do some simulation uh, I'm going to take the three out robotic arm to show as an example for um, for these commands. Uh, I typed everything already here uh, in this uh, M file, but I'm going to copy these and show you how it looks like in the command window. So I'm going to take L1 and L2 uh, to be 2 and 5. So I'm going to copy this and paste it here. So L1 is 2 and L2 is 5. And then I'm going to write my DH parameters uh, in here. So I'm going to copy this, and this is in the order of theta, d, a, and alpha. And I'm going to paste it here. So these are my dh parameters. And then I'm going to create the links uh, as we saw in earlier uh, chapters. So that would create links 1 through 3 for my 3R robot. So these are my 3 links. Now I'm ready to define my uh, robotic object using these links. So I'm going to copy this and paste it here. So now I have a robot object that's named my3r, that's the object. And then these are the DH parameters for this object. All right, now I'm going to do this in two different ways. The first way if, if we're doing joint control. So we are going to use joint trajectories and we're going to control the robot using joint domain. Uh, meaning that we don't care where the end effector or how it moves. We are only moving the joints one by one um, in, in that domain. So the first thing I'm going to create initial joint angles here. This is key initial and we have three angles. So I'm going to paste them here. These are the initial angles and radians. And then desired angles. And I'm going to copy and paste right here. So these are the desired angles that I would like to go to. Now I'm ready to generate a trajectory. And what this does here, it, you put the initial Q and the final or desired Q, and then the number of steps. So I'm gonna take 100 steps here. And this QT becomes a matrix that includes three joints in each row. Uh, so that would be three, uh, three ve vectors uh, and three uh, 100 rows, uh, or three columns and 100 rows. So I'm gonna put it here. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't copy this yet. I'm going to copy this. 
and paste it here. And that's my 100 by 3 vector. Okay, so each one of these lines is one trajectory point, another trajectory point. This would be theta 1, and theta 2, and theta 3 for the, the first trajectory point. And then second trajectory point until we reach to the hundredth trajectory point. Okay, so these are all my trajectories. And now we are ready to plot the simulation of this robot. So I'm going to use the command here, plot, and the name of my robot. Here, if I put Q initial or Q final, uh, it's just going to show me the state of that robot uh, in that Q initial or Q final. Uh, but well, if I put here the trajectory, it will just simulate the whole trajectory uh, that shows, uh, you know, uh, the motion. So as you can see here, each one of the joints is moving independently, and then the vector is not following any particular line. Uh, it's just following the trajectories for each one of the joints. Okay. Now, if I'm doing Cartesian control, so basically I'm commanding the end effector to follow a straight line, then I'll have to define uh, initial transformation matrix and desired transformation matrix. And then I'm going to create a trajectory for transformation matrices. So I'll start here with the initial transformation matrix, which, which I have typed here. So I'm just going to copy and paste here. So that's my T initial. And I'm going to also uh, define my desired transformation matrix. Again, I have it here copied and pasted. So this is my des desired transformation. And now I'm ready to create a trajectory, Cartesian trajectory. In this case, I'm going to use C-Traj as opposed to J-Traj that we used earlier. Uh, so for joint trajectory, we use J-Traj. For Cartesian trajectory, we use C-Traj. And here the input is T-initial, T-desired, and the number of steps. I'm going to, again, I'm going to use 100 steps for this trajectory. So this TT basically is a trajectory that, in, that stacks all the trajectory transformation matrices in a column. So each 4x4 four four transformation matrix is followed by another 4x4 four four transformation matrix column-wise. Uh, so basically this uh, matrix here is going to be 100 times 4, so that's 400, uh, by uh, 4. 400 rows and 4 columns. Okay, and we're going to look at this when we copy this and paste it here. Okay, so this is my trajectory uh, transformation matrices. So if we go here all the way up to the top, uh, this, is my, this is my command that I put there. And this is T, trajectory for the first trajectory point. That would be my transformation. And then the second and third and fourth, all the way until we get down to the hundredth trajectory point. Okay, so all these now are transformation matrices. Now remember, when we input this into our simulation, we put it in joints. Uh, so we need to convert each one of these uh, transformation matrices in our trajectories into corresponding joint angles. Okay, so for this, we are going to need to use the inverse kinematics. So here I'm going to use QT, so that will create a corresponding trajectory that corresponds to the transformations along each trajectory point. Okay, and here I'm going to specify that this is for my robot, that's called my3R. I'm going to use iKind, and then the input is the trajectory transformations from here. Okay, so it will create a corresponding trajectory uh, joints. And then the mask here is also needed for uh, specifying what are the Cartesian uh, velocities uh, or, or uh, Cartesian coordinates that we're controlling. So since this, uh, this is a planar robot, we're controlling X and Y and rotation about Z. We are not controlling Z or rotation about X or rotation about Y. Okay, so now I'm going to be copying this. I'm pasting it here. All right, so now I have corresponding joint angles for each trajectory point. Okay, so this is our first uh, set of angles for uh, the first transformation matrix and so forth all the way until we get to the hundredth. 
And now we're ready to do simulation. And I'd like you to pay attention to how the simulation goes. Uh, because this is going to follow, the end effector will follow a straight line as opposed to how it was random uh, in the previous uh, simulation. So as you see here, it's following a straight line and it's also uh, adjusting the rotation of the end effector as well. Okay, so that's what I want you to know about uh, uh, in MATLAB about uh, trajectory generation. Uh, so here the keywords that we used is, uh, or actually are two different commands that we learned that are new, which are jtrash, that's creating a trajectory in joint uh, mode. So that would be qi and qdesired. And the second command we used is ctrash, which generates a Cartesian trajectory uh, for all robot and that also the inputs are uh, T initial and T desired. These are transformation matrices, of course, and of course the uh, number of uh, via points. All right. And that takes us to the end of this chapter. Uh, we covered here uh, some theory in uh, trajectory generation. We took some examples and we, uh, we also took some MATLAB commands and looked at how they are, uh, how they look like in MATLAB environment and how we do a simulation with this. Thank you.